Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Going to be making assembly videos all day today, uh, starting with the six-button debounce kit. Uh, now let me just quickly explain it. I have a demonstration video for this uh, uh, that I've already created. Uh, this is merely just an assembly video, but what it does, there's six buttons. There is a uh, jumper here that you can enable latching and, and non-latching. When you press buttons, typically there is a mechanical bounce that can interfere with uh, with very sensitive uh, input I/O lines, uh, including Arduino. And so what this does is the six buttons go through a microcontroller. If it's in non-latching mode, monetary mode, the outputs will go high as long as you're holding the button down, and then go low when you let go without any mechanical bounce. And if you place it into latching mode, then you press a button, you let go, that output toggles from 0 to 1, from 0 to 5 volts. You press it again, it goes from 5 volts down to 0 volts, high to low. So you can connect these to your relay drivers, to your Arduino, to your digital circuitry. Uh, you can use it as a test device. Uh, very useful, very uh, easy to put together, and uh, yeah, so I'll introduce you to the parts. This is the fully assembled module, what it should look like when it's done. You've got six monetary push buttons, a 7805 5 volt regulator, two pin terminal block, a uh, 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, 0 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor, four pin header, um, an eight pin header, a 18 pin dip socket, programmed eight, 18 pin microcontroller, a uh, header connector, two pin header connector, and seven 10 k ohm resistors. So first of all, we're going to do the resistors. The resistors have no polarity, they can be placed in either way. And you just have to look on the board for the slots. R5 is labeled R5 10k, R7 10k, R4 10k, R1 10k, R2 10k, R3 10k, and R6 10k. Place all of your uh, resistors in and uh, solder them in. Make sure there's no shorting. Cut off the extra leads and next we will do the capacitors and the buttons. Your single ceramic capacitor with 0.1 microfarad goes in this slot right here. It's labeled 0.1U. It's not polarized, it can go in either way. Both leads are the same size. The electrolytic goes into uh, the C2 slot, which is labeled 10U for 10 micro C2. Now on the right hand side from this perspective, there's a little tiny plus side on the right hand side. That means that we want to place our positive lead in that corner and our negative lead on the left hand side. Now on the capacitor, there is a long lead and a short lead. The long lead is the positive, the short lead is the negative. Place your long lead on the right with the side with the plus sign and your short lead on the left. Now if you turn that around and you power it on, the capacitor will blow up. So be very careful and have a good sense of attention to detail. The buttons, uh, they go into the S1 to S6 slots. They really only fit in one way and should pop in relatively easily. Make sure they're flush to the board when you solder them all into place and each one of the buttons has four leads. So solder those into place. Next we'll do our uh, our headers and our socket. The socket has a notch on the left hand side. The footprint has a notch on the left hand side. The microchip, the program microcontroller, has a notch on the left hand side. It might be difficult to see from here, but what you want to do is from a bird's eye view, make sure that the notch on the socket is placed in the same side as the notch on the board. So when you place your socket, from this perspective, socket on the left, socket on the left, place it in from a bird's eye view. Solder it into place, make sure there's absolutely no shorts, the leads are small. When you're done that, take your microcontroller and make sure that the notch is facing left from this perspective. Pop it in. Now, one thing to note, if you put your microcontroller in backwards, you're going to fry it when you power it up. So make sure that from this perspective, you match notch, left, notch, notch. Uh, the two headers, the first header, the four pin header is placed right in here. And uh, just make sure that it's uh, the bottom is flush with the board. We can place our header connector on if we want to go into latching mode. Um, and the eight pin header goes in right here. Now here's something to consider. If you have the long sides facing up, you can wire wrap to it, you can use a, uh, a plug in connector to plug into it. But what I might suggest is placing the uh, long leads facing the bottom. So what I mean by is by taking the short leads and placing it on the bottom, 
so that the short leads are facing here and soldering from the top down so you can just place this into your breadboard. So that's how I'm going to solder it this time. And I'll give you the demonstration when we're done. So after you solder all that into place, we'll do uh, our terminal block and our 7805. And when we're done that, we'll test it. So as you can see, I soldered from the top and my leads, my long leads are on the bottom. So now we've got to do a terminal block and our uh, 7805 5 volt regulator. So our 5 volt regulator has a side with writing on it, black side, and a more or less uh, grayish white side. On the footprint there is a white side and there's a front side. Which uh, You want to make sure that the white side, the ground side, is facing the back and that the side with writing on it is facing the front like so. Place it down into the board and solder it into place. The terminal block has a terminal side and a plastic side. Terminals have to face outside like this. Make sure that you solder those flush to the board and once we are done we will wire it up and test it. So I plugged in a supply of 7 volts. You can have 7 to 12 volts uh, at the input. It's regulated down to 5 using the 7805. Once it's powered on, it goes into one of two modes, uh, monetary or latching. And you can't change it on the fly. It has to be during power-up. So I power it on. If there's nothing on the header here, on the, the LAT header, the two rightmost headers, the left two most headers, by the way, are, are useless. The right two most headers uh, pins, if they are shorted using this little uh, header connector on power up, it'll go into latching mode. But if you're leaving it bare, you'll start off in monetary push button switch mode. And so I powered it on. <clears throat> now the there is bounce on the inputs, but the outputs are not bounced, or are debounced rather with through software. So there are eight pins on the output ground and five volts, so you can easily interface with another device. And then there's a1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6. A1 corresponds to S1. A2 corresponds to S2, like the switch to. Uh, so if I press S1 right now, oh, I have to power it on first. If I press S1, the A1 uh, output will go high. And I'm using LEDs as an indicator right now with a 470 ohm resistor. They don't come with the kit, but I uh, plug right in the breadboard. S1 goes high, debounced, and stays high until I let go. S2, S3, S4, S5, S6. And that again corresponds to A1 through A6. Now if I power it off, and I put the jumper on the two rightmost header pins here, and I power it back on, we'll go into latching mode. Press the button once, it latches high. Press it again, toggles. High, low, high, low, high, low. And that goes for all of them. So there you have it. Debounced, uh, monetary, and latching outputs. Easy to put together. Uh, there's another demonstration video that I have. This can be found uh, very soon at engineeringshark.com and electronlessons.com. Thanks for watching, everyone.